And now I'm going to go ahead and hand you over to our today's presenter, RJ Adler from Wheelpad. Howdy folks. Uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to learn more a little bit about Wheelpad. I'm excited to chat today a little bit about uh, both our products and uh, you know, also weave into that some of the conversations about uh, the different AT programs across the states. Um, so uh, Wheelpad is really excited to be doing this in conjunction with uh, Ability Tools in California. And that is uh, California State's Assistive Technology Program, or Ability Tools uh, is Cal uh, California's uh, State Assistive Technology Program. Uh, so some of the questions uh, that you might uh, get an answer to are going to come from our lovely hosts. Uh, and I know that we've got some representation from other assistive technology programs across the country. So um, uh, in this slide, this first slide, you're seeing the Wheelpad logo and you're also seeing a picture of a Wheelpad that we set up as a demonstration project uh, in a field in Vermont. Uh, I tried to choose the Vermontiest photo I could here with all those beautiful fall colors in the background. It is, um, uh, it is very similar uh, to, uh, you know, this is our first model. Uh, our, our, our current models are, are very similar to this one. Um, and, you know, we've grown and changed from here. So. Um, if you could go to the next slide. Uh, so here's our agenda for today. I'll give a little bit of an introduction. Um, I'll talk about the vision of Wheelpad uh, and uh, our products, our company, as well as you know, how we do what we do. Uh, so um, myself, my name is RJ. I've been with Wheelpad for about a year now. And um, I have been living in Vermont uh, since 2008 when I moved up here to go to college. And I started my career in the solar energy industry and, you know, have, have made this shift into accessible housing, which is more similar than, than you would think. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to be here and I love working at Wheelpad, getting up every day and doing this type of work. Uh, our vision of Wheelpad is to create universally accessible buildings and make it possible for people to do so. So, you know, we want to create a world where every building is universally accessible and we got a long way to go, um, but we're, uh, you know, we're trying to provide as many solutions as possible. Um, the, the story of Wheelpad is really the story of the two folks that you're seeing here in this picture on this slide. Um, seated uh, is Riley Poor in this picture. And uh, standing next to him is Julie Leinberger. And Julie is the founder of Wheelpad. And Riley uh, is the reason that Wheelpad was created. Um, Riley is Julie, Julie's godson. And the person that was taking this picture is Joseph Sincata. Uh, he is uh, Riley's godfather, uh, Julie's husband. And uh, the wheel pad was created because Riley got in a traumatic swimming accident and became a quadriplegic. And his recovery had to happen uh, for nine months in a hotel room because they weren't able to find a universally accessible place for Riley to live. So Riley, so dur during that time, Riley and Julia Joseph had this conversation of, oh, what if there had been this this, this thing that you could have just delivered and attached to your house uh, that would have had, you know, the, the bedroom space you needed, a bathroom that you could use. Uh, you could build a ramp up to it to be able to get into your house. Uh, and from that, Wheelpad was born. That's, that's definitely the quick story. Um, but that is how, uh, you know, that's how we got to where we are today. Um, so, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go through, so you, show you some pictures now of our models, the different models that we put together, as well as, uh, you know, sort of our, our process and the way that works. So, um, can you go to the next slide, please, Catherine? As well as, uh, you know, sort of our, our process, 
Great. Uh, so in this slide, you're seeing four different pictures of our four different models. And those models are called the ad pad, home attachment, the XL pad, uh, the multi pad, and the my pad. Uh, so starting in the picture on the top left, uh, you see a picture of Julie standing next to uh, our first ad pad that we ever built. And this is a 200 square foot universally accessible home attachment that can be installed in about seven days uh, onto any building uh, in, in the United States or beyond. Um, it's eight and a half feet wide and it can be pulled behind a regular pickup truck. So you don't need a special license to be, you know, a commercial driver's license to be able to pull it. And uh, if you are close enough to one of our manufacturing facilities, uh, you, can, you can go pick it up yourself. Um, the process of connecting it to your home, as I said, takes about a week and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the connector uh, later. The next picture uh, on the top right is a picture of our XL pad. The XL pad is very similar to the ad pad. It is a two room home attachment and it has the same features, the same ceiling track, uh, hoist track to take you from one end to the other. Uh, the bathroom is very similar. Uh, it's just wider. So it can accommodate a queen size bed uh, or a kitchen. And uh, we developed the, the XL pad. I'll tell you the story a little bit more uh, later. We developed the uh, XL pad for the little family in Jericho, Vermont. Um, they were a family that had, uh, there was a family that um, Edmund Little was uh, diagnosed with ALS. He wanted a pad that he could attach to his home that he could still, that was large enough for a queen size bed so he could still sleep with his wife. Uh, so we were able to develop that new product for him and we were very excited about it. Um, so going down from there, you see a rendering in the bottom right hand side of the screen of the MyPad. And the MyPad is very similar to the AdPad, but it is longer and that gives us enough space to accommodate a kitchen. And that way you can have it in the backyard. It doesn't have to be connected directly to a uh, regular house uh, or, or the host dwelling. Uh, from there, uh, the multi-pad, which is the bottom left-hand picture that you're seeing in this screen, is multiple ad pads that are built onto one connecting structure, and that creates three distinct apartments. Uh, because we were built out of a uh, architecture firm, Julian Joseph had been running line sync architecture for 25 years before they found ad pad, uh, or before they found wheel pad, uh, we're able to design that connecting structure for the multi-pad to be whatever it needs to be for the, the situation. We can make it a three bedroom house. We could make it, you know, a, a three or five unit apartment building, universally accessible apartment building. So it is uh, up to your imagination. Could you go to the next slide, please, Catherine? So this slide is showing you a uh, big picture of the inside of an ad pad. And the, the features that I'll point out to you here are uh, on the ceiling, that black line that's going across is a hoist track. And that hoist track is compatible with any lift on the market. And it takes you from all the way from one end of the ad pad to the other. So the area where the bed can go all the way to the area uh, that that's the bathroom. Um, and the bathroom, if you go to the next slide, Catherine, is a full wet room. Uh, so you'll notice there's no, uh, there's no shower to transition in and out of. The entire room uh, is able to get wet and everything will go down into a central drain. And you can see in the very top of that photo, the hoist track is going all the way into the center of the building. Uh, so you're able to avoid transitions in and out of a shower. You can stay on that hoist track, uh, easy transitions right onto the toilet. Uh, it, is, it is what, uh, you know, and we can make that 
uh, we can make that work best for you if, if you want some kind of customization there too. Uh, so can you go to the next slide, please? So this is showing you the ad pad looking out the other direction. So you can see in this picture, we've got big windows on the side, uh, big sliding door, and that lets in a whole lot of natural light into the building. Could you go to the next photo, please? This photo is showing you that there are two doors on the ad pad. So there's, you know, the, the thing about modular building is that, uh, you know, it's all built off site and we wanna make it as flexible as possible when it arrives to your home. And we've had ad pads that we've built onto houses that are simple connections through that single swinging door uh, that you're seeing in this picture. We've also had more grandiose connections uh, that are connected through the sliding glass door. Uh, and it, it really depends on what's best for your property. So uh, for instance, one of the most recent uh, ad pads that we put in in Vermont, in Burlington, Vermont, uh, it was a family whose mother was moving in uh, to live with her children. The Mother is a painter and she wanted a little bit of extra studio space. And we decided the easiest way to give her that extra studio space was to build a slightly wider connector to the unit. So it was essentially connected through her studio and she was able to uh, sit in there and do her, uh, you know, have space for her hobby, for her painting during uh, the pandemic. So could you go to the next slide, please? So this uh, slide shows you what a simple connector is like from the unit to the house. Uh, this is the Everingham family uh, and this is their house in Brattleboro, Vermont. Uh, and this connector uh, takes about a week to build uh, in general. Uh, we got this one done very quickly and you'll, you'll learn a little bit more about the Everingham story later. But some of the things that I like to point out about the connector here, um, there's two pictures on this slide. On the left-hand side, you're seeing the interior of the connector. And you're looking from the wheel pad into the main dwelling of you know, the Everingham's house. So uh, Bob, who is the grandfather that lives in the wheel pad, is able to wheel in and out for meals, but still have some private space to himself. On the right-hand side of this picture, of this slide, you're seeing the exterior of the connector. And you can see that it bridges right from the house to the unit. It doesn't need a foundation built underneath it. So that's one of the things that makes the wheel pad install so quickly is that really all we're doing is building, you know, two walls, a floor and a roof sandwiched between the unit and the main dwelling. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's able to be done quickly and it's also able to be taken away quickly. Uh, I'll talk about pricing later, but these units can be purchased or they can be leased depending on the amount of time that the family needs uh, the unit on their home. Could you go to the next slide, please? So in this slide, you're seeing an interior shot of the XL pad. So this was the pad that we built uh, and designed specifically for a family in Jericho, Vermont, the little family who uh, the uh, Edmund Little uh, was diagnosed with ALS and he wanted a place that he could have, you know, his own space in the house, um, but also needed the features of the wheel pad. And he said, you know, I love the ad pad. I love what you've done, but I, I just need something a little bit bigger so I can put a queen size bed in and still have space to, uh, to sleep with my wife. So that's, that's why we built the XL pad. You can see that in the ceiling, it still has that hoist track that brings you from one side all the way to the other, still has those big buildings or uh, big, big windows. And uh, the bathroom is, is a, you know, wet room the same way that it is in the ad pad. Um, the other things that I'll point out in this photo that I think are well documented here, there is uh, some decorative siding on the walls uh, and that's, that's plywood siding. 
And that's just to essentially protect the walls because when you have a room with a wheelchair in it, uh, oftentimes the walls can get pretty beat up from the arms or the, the feet. Uh, and by putting that siding on the walls, it's pretty easy just to replace that siding uh, if, you know, and, and that protects the walls from getting too beat up. Uh, so there's a lot of different pieces that we've thought very specifically about how best to create a unit like this. Uh, so can you go to the next slide, please, Catherine? So this is showing the connector from uh, the the every or sorry from the little's house to their wheel pad, and you can see this is a much larger connector. So this is one of those options of if you need more space, you can build it in the connector or you can have it in the wheel pad. It's really up to the family and up to the specific house as to what is going to work best for them. The, the, the different ways of installing here are sort of a marriage between modular manufacturing and stick built manufacturing. So you get the flexibility of stick built, manu you know, stick -built uh, building, but you also get the predictability of modular manufacturing and it just moves everything a little bit more uh, smoothly throughout the process. So could you go to the next slide, please? Uh, so this slide is showing you uh, our, mul our multi-pad. So it has a picture of the multi-pad up on top and it also has uh, a bird's eye view of the multi-pad, of, of the drawing of the interior of the multi-pad. And so in that drawing, you're seeing that um, on, the, on the sides, you can see that there's those ad pads that are, uh, that are built onto that one connecting structure. So the blue and yellow areas are the ad pads and the white and pink areas, peach areas are that connecting building. And again, with that, marriage of modular manufacturing and stick built construction, we can make a building quickly and closer to budget that is suitable for any property. We built this multi-pad first for a, a, school in Mass or a school in New Hampshire that was looking to have universally accessible faculty housing. And this has huge implications for the affordable housing space. Uh, so, um, you know, we're definitely looking for options for different ways to have that uh, work in different communities across the country. Could you go to the next slide? Uh, so this is a short little video clip uh, of Bob and John Everingham, and uh, it, it should work uh, and you should be able to just, you know, see the wheel pad in action and see the folks that are using it. This is going to be a huge uh, opportunity for dad and it's beautiful. Love it. Well, thank you for designing this wheel pad as well as helping us to put it together. It's been a pleasure. It's really, I'm really glad you're able to be back home. Really? Uh, yeah. Looking forward to it, really. Thank you. Great. Great. Um, so, you know, as you're seeing there, uh, we can build. Uh, onto the side of a wheel pad, uh, a deck on the other side, you know, through that, that exterior door on the other side. Uh, the story of the Everinghams is one that I think is, you know, sort of very classic uh, 2020, as it were. Bob uh, was in a rehab facility and John was worried about him because the pandemic had just started. This was about a year ago that we installed this unit onto their house. And uh, John was thinking, oh my gosh, how, how do I get my dad out of this facility quickly? We don't have enough space for him to, to live here at home with us. And Bob's wife, Jennifer, had run into Wheelpad, had run into Julie, our founder, at a tiny house festival in Vermont. And she said, you know, there, there is this one option that I'm pretty sure exists. They called us up, uh, we had one in inventory, and because Bob and Jennifer lived uh, 20 minutes away from Wheelpad World Headquarters, uh, we were able to deliver it quickly and install it quickly for them. 
so if you go to the next slide, Catherine, that talks about the uh, timeline. Uh, so we got, uh, in Vermont, our lockdown happened on uh, March 19th, or, or sorry, March 14th. Uh, we got a call on the 16th of March from Jennifer. And then on the uh, 19th of March, we reached out to the city of Brattleboro. We told them what we were doing, why we were doing it. They said, uh, you know, because of, you know, the size of our town, because of the circumstances, you're not going to need a permit. Every town is gonna have a different rule, you know, different rules around zoning. Um, but we, we definitely work with the families to help them uh, connect with, with their town and, and get the right permits needed. And on the 21st of March, they got um, Bob out of the nursing home and into their home. And then they signed a lease a week later uh, with Wheelpad. And then a week after that, we were able to deliver the wheel pad and build that connector. Uh, and the picture that you're seeing on this slide is a picture of the family that had the wheel pad before the Everinghams did. They were insistent upon helping to deliver and helping to build the connector uh, from the wheel pad to uh, the Everinghams house. So we're, we're definitely trying to build a community of people that are excited about Wheelpad that have used Wheelpad and that can also connect their neighbors, their friends uh, with this housing unit. We're, we're talking about building housing, but we're also talking about building accessible housing. Uh, so uh, there's, you know, this, this is definitely gonna be a community effort. So can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, so I wanna talk a little bit about the pricing uh, for our products. Um, you're seeing a picture in this slide uh, of an ad pad that's being delivered. Uh, this is being delivered out uh, onto Cape Cod, uh, where we delivered uh, that ad pad about a year ago. Um, as you can see, it's being pulled behind a regular pickup truck. Uh, and with the ad pad, which is our smallest home attachment model, uh, you can lease it for $3,000 a month, or you can purchase it for $79,000. And that, you know, all depends on what your need is. If you're planning on, uh, you know, if you need your home to be universally accessible for, you know, six to eight months while you recover after an accident or a surgery, then we can set it up so that, uh, you know, we'll drop it off, we'll pick it up, um, and we will uh, be able to help you install it uh, in, in that period of time. Uh, the, if you purchase it at $79,000, because maybe you don't know how long you're going to need it, or you're going to need it for a longer period of time, Wheelpad offers to purchase it back from you when you're done with it. So depending on, uh, the, the need of your family, we're able to, uh, give you that option. Um, the pad, which is that slightly longer version that has a kitchen in it, um, that's delivered to your home for $114,000. Um, the XL pad, which is that wider version, that uh, is $95,000. And that doesn't include delivery because it's wider, because it's a more customized unit, because it requires a crane for uh, placement. It's a little bit harder for us to, uh, to really zero in on a delivery cost. So that is $95,000, not including delivery. Uh, and then there's the multi-pad. And uh, the multi-pad multi trio is $395,000 or the quint uh, is $550,000. So that would be a three unit or a five unit. And uh, you know, that, that also includes delivery uh, of, of the uh, wheel pad units in there as well. Uh, we, when we deliver, uh, and you know, when you call up Wheelpad, we have a conversation with you. We work with, uh, ideally a local contractor in your area that's done some building to help you put together that, uh, you know, that local zoning permit, uh, that has, you know, maybe they've done a little bit of work on your house before. So they have an understanding of the systems of your house. And we virtually provide construction support and permitting support, uh, to that individual who is, helping you install the wheel pad onto your house. So, uh, you know, we're really in it with you for the entire process. Um, 
And then, you know, financing support, you know, low interest loans, uh, those might be available to you through your state. Uh, so, you know, be sure to ask about those afterwards and Catherine uh, or some of the other state AT folks might be able to uh, answer some of those questions for you as well. Um, so could you go to the next slide? So what Wheelpad is really trying to be is another option. And, uh, you know, when, when we're looking at sort of the options for, you know, either elderly parents moving in with you uh, or, uh, you know, rehab facilities for recovering from an injury or a surgery or something like that, you're able to, we're, we're trying to be that, that other option. So you can, instead of going to a nursing home, uh, purchase a wheel pad, put it on your house, attach it to your house, put it in the backyard uh, and, you know, retain a lot of that value. So, you know, if you, uh, you know, refinance your house to, to get some of the cash out uh, and pay for it, all the interest on that is tax deductible. Um, you know, the value of adding extra space to your house, that's definitely valuable in any real estate market. Um, but also there's that wheel pad buyback program. So we can purchase the unit back from you when you're done with it. Um, you know, on the flip side with the expenses, when you go to a nursing home, you're paying rent to be in that nursing home and, and that value isn't retained. Uh, you know, you're, and that can, that can be very expensive depending on where you are in the country. Um, it can be up to $10,000 per month. And then there's also, you know, better health outcomes from being able to remain in your space, being able to maintain settings and routines and just, you know, maintain that independence. Uh, whereas going to a nursing home, there's greater potential for exposure to diseases and just needing to adjust to a new community and a new routine. So again, we're just, we're another option. Could you go to the next slide, Catherine? So the other option, um, you know, is, is home renovation. And there are definitely folks that decide to, you know, remain in their home, age in place, and they're looking at, okay, well, if I'm gonna age in place, how am I gonna make this home a place that I can age into? Um, and they are, in that case, facing a lot of decisions. If you've never managed a construction project, it can take a long time. Uh, it's an undefined process. Uh, and you're, you're not really sure, you know, there's, there's not a super defined budget, right? Because you're not, you know, it could be, you don't know what you're going to find when you start tearing your house apart. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of unknowns. Whereas with a wheel pad, 95% of the project is done offsite. And we're just, you know, building that simple connector. So there's, there's a much tighter time frame that we can uh, install the project and a much tighter time, uh, you know, budget frame that, a, you know, a project is going to cost because of, you know, essentially the simplicity of the project once, once it's beyond delivery. And then again, you know, if you're, you know, if you're renovating your home, you might have to, you know, figure out where you're going to live during that renovation, or uh, you have to live through a renovation. And if you've ever done that, um, you know, take my word for it. It, it can be, it can be a little stressful. Um, you know, whereas with Wheelpad, this is all happening outside, uh, and it's happening in the span of weeks, not the span of months. And again, we can purchase that unit back from you once you're done using it. Uh, so. Um, I think the next slide just has our logo and uh, my contact information. Um, so Wheelpad, your home accessible now. That's what we like to uh, say. Again, my name is RJ Adler. My phone number is 802-458-7194. And you can email me at rj at wheelpad.com. Again, that's 802-458-7194 and rj at wheelpad.com, W-H-E-E-L-P-A-D.com. Um, so at this point, I think uh, you've all listened to me jabber on uh, for a good long time. So I'd be happy to take some questions uh, from, from folks either live or on Facebook or in the chat.
go for it. Hi, RJ. We're going to go ahead and um, launch a couple of polls while we wait for people to put their questions in the chat. Let's go ahead and do the first one, guys. Uh, Megan, it is not letting me access the polls. Do you have access to them? I do. I'll go ahead and launch it now. Thank you. So our first poll here says, what role best describes your participation in today's webinar? And the options are it's multiple choice. You can pick individual with a disability, family advocate, guardian, or authorized representative, representative of education, representative of employment, representative of health, allied health, or rehab, or representative of community living, representative of technology, or other. So we'll go ahead and leave that up for just a few more seconds here. We've got the majority of you in. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. This helps us with our, to bring more of these presentations to you. And Catherine, we have a second question here. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So let me go ahead and get the second question launched then. And the second question is, are you from a metro urban or non-metro rural area? Um, and there's the option for metro and option for non-metro. And I apologize. I'll come on camera. And I have a green background since we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day remotely with you all. Um, perfect, so I'll go ahead and stop the polling and thank you all for taking that. And I think we're ready for q and I've gotten a couple questions that have come to me uh, directly in the chat. And you also, I'm now gonna allow all participants to uh, unmute themselves. So you can also ask a question on your microphone and we invite you to turn your cameras on and come join us. Our first, first question here comes from Joe and he wants to know, what is the grade of the ramp? The grade of the ramp is the, uh, you can go down one inch uh, for every 12 inches out that you go. So that's the code of whatever ramp you're building anywhere in the country. So, uh, you know, that's gonna be the grade of the ramp no matter where it is now depending on how much you need to go down, that's gonna mean you need a longer ramp or a shorter ramp. The units themselves are built on a trailer and we can take the wheels off to lower it down or we can raise it up, depending on what the, the height is that's necessary for your home. Uh, so does that answer your question, Joe? And if it doesn't, Joe, please put it in the chat. Our next question here is from Pam who wants to know, how much space is needed for my pad to get into a backyard? meaning to get from the road to the backyard and maneuver it around? How much space would you need? Uh, I mean, we have, you know, professional drivers that can drop these off. And I've seen, you know, I've seen professional drivers, uh, you know, grease these trailers into some pretty tight spots. Um, on our Facebook, um, I can, I can share the, uh, I can share it, the, the link with, with you all after, but um, you know, we've, uh, you know, ideally we're going to have, you know, at least sort of 12 feet, but it depends on the site, you know, worst comes to worst, we can always use a crane to deliver it, you know, into, into the spot for install. Um, we've, we've definitely used cranes to move around these buildings before. Uh, so I would say that's dependent on your site, uh, but we will do all we can to try to roll it in. And this is Megan. Joe did follow up. That was the answer he was looking for. And he indicated it looked much steeper in the video. So I guess the video is a little deceiving. <laughs> Got ya. The video might have been, that might have been a temporary ramp. In, in a few cases, we've installed temporary ramps to help people, uh, you know, sort of get in, you know, be able to be at home. Uh, and then, you know, a couple days later, get a more permanent ramp installed. Uh, so, you know, we, we definitely work with what we've got uh, in terms of what's best for the client. And this is Megan, I apologize. We had the chat setting turned so you could only message me as the host. I just fixed that. So now you can chat with everyone publicly and privately. So I apologize and please, I think everyone should have access to your camera. If you'd like to be brave and come on and join us, you're welcome to. If you don't have access, let me know in the chat so I can try and fix that bug too. <laughs>
Okay, so I've got another question here from Kathy, and she says, I noticed that there's an electrical outlet placed high up on the wall. What's the purpose of that? Uh, in today's day and age, you need electrical outlets everywhere. So, you know, some folks might want to install a television, uh, you know, higher up on the wall. In some cases, uh, the, the unit, the, the ramp, or sorry, the hoist track that takes you from one side of the room to the other needs to be plugged in. Uh, if it's, you know, going to be a, a, an electrical hoist. So uh, it's, again, it's about flexibility. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the electrical outlets that we have closer to the bottom, we've actually raised up beyond what ADA says they should be at. So it's easier to plug and unplug things from a seated position. So, you know, we look at, when we designed this unit, we said, this is what ADA says, but what's, you know, what's above and beyond that, you know, how, how using modern equipment can we really be as accessible as possible? So that was the, uh, th that was the thought process there. So I don't know what you're gonna plug in up high, but I also don't know what you're gonna put in the unit. Maybe a disco ball would be nice up there. Um, so we have a, another question. We noticed a lot of these examples you shared are from Vermont. What if folks are wanting to lease in California? How does that process work to lease when the product is in Vermont? Uh, luckily, because it's eight and a half feet wide, the ad pad can be sent across the country really easily. Uh, it can, we can put it on a train and that's not only a really environmentally friendly way to get it across the country, uh, but also uh, just, you know, simple, right? And we can deliver it door to door. We've got distribution partners that we work with uh, and whether you're leasing uh, or whether you're purchasing, the delivery is included in the cost. If you're leasing, um, the pickup is also included in that cost. Perfect. Thanks, RJ. And Kathy said thank you for uh, clarifying on the high up electrical socket. You've certainly thought of everything. Uh, Tobias has a question. He says, do you offer financing for low income or folks who are on a fixed income? Uh, we are searching for in-house financing, but I'm going to turn that over to the folks at Ability Tools uh, as to some of the options that are available there. Hi there. So we actually um, have been, this has been a part of a larger discussion that we've been having at um, CFILC. And we were hoping that if anybody is wanting to participate in sort of a meetup where we can have a, a discussion where we can give people advice on how to advocate for their consumers or advocate for themselves um, with their local um, counties, local governments, work with housing advocates and um, see how we can push forward um, methods for um, being able to get financing for these options. Um, you know, this uh, Willpad is, has a great opportunity to be um, a really good housing option in the middle of a pretty significant housing crisis that we as Californians are experiencing. And so if you would like to be a part of that discussion, we have a couple of ideas and we want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, reach out and we um, are planning on organizing something with RJ to be able to discuss these options and see how we can get Willpad to be a more, not only fully accessible physical space, but also financially accessible option for the members of our community. Thank you, Catherine. Um, our next question here is from Joe. He wants to know, RJ, how much have you worked with city councils and what have they generally said about Wheelpad? Um, each town has been different depending on what the, you know, sort of zoning, you know, laws say and what's allowed, especially out in California, it's getting easier and easier to put what's called accessory dwelling units on your property. Uh, I, I was, you know, most recently in a very specific case, uh, I chatted with the town of Milpitas, California, they would consider the wheel pad the ad pad to be a guest house if it doesn't have a if it doesn't have a kitchen in it so our, that smallest unit uh, and you know there there is a defined process for how to install a guest house on your property but it's not a foreign process so luckily cities across the country are you know opening up 
their their rules and regulations on you know when people are allowed to install units like this. What's working in the favor of the wheel pad is one, we're not some vanity project. In a lot of cases, these are people that need housing or need accessibility in their homes. So, you know, we're able to tell a pretty good story. Two, because the unit's on wheels, a lot of different towns view it as a temporary structure. But one of the reasons that we work with local contractors is they have a relationship with the zoning administration and they know how to best try to go get a permit for you. And so we're going to support them by giving them and, you know, support you by giving you the plans. So there's a full understanding of what this unit is, how it's going to be installed, how it's going to work with city systems. And then from there, we're going to be able to ideally get it installed quickly because that's the whole point, right? Is to be able to install this quickly for your, for your family. Uh, you know, city councils specifically, um, I don't know that this has gone before a council versus a zoning board, but again, we would still be able to tell a pretty good story. Thank you, RJ. And it sounds like you're really willing to work with the people and support them to get these in their homes or in their places. Um, our next question, I'm going to break it down a little bit. Um, it's from Pam, who's in Toronto. So welcome. I'm glad we have some Canadians on the call. Um, and she wants to know, well, kind of wants to know, are you able to remove the wheels from the wheel pad so that it can be more like a tiny home on the property? Yes, um, we can remove the wheels. Uh, we can install it uh, on a permanent foundation. We can make it look like it's supposed to be part of your house. You can customize the outside if you want to. But, you know, if, if you don't want to kind of customize the outside, we can just remove the wheels and make sure that it's at the right tight for your home, essentially. Uh, uh, there's, there's stabilizing jacks on all four corners and that makes it easy to, you know, raise or lower the unit to the spot that it needs to be at. That's awesome. Part of her comment says wheel pad would be perfect once those wheels are either disguised or removed. So now you know you can remove them, Pam, uh, because the driveways are very narrow and there's large trees where you're at. And it looks like Toronto's really encouraging people to have quote unquote, garden suites. So this could be a good option for that. I don't see any more questions towards me. Catherine, have you received any in the chat towards you or any uh, additional things you'd like to add on? No, I haven't gotten any additional questions. I do really want to reiterate um, to please reach out if you're interested in the discussion on financing. I've been dedicating a good amount of time to researching this. We just don't have the, um, we have time constraints within this webinar to be able to have this larger discussion. Um, so please reach out so that we can set up another meeting where we can discuss these options. And one other thing I'd like to say, um, some, some shout outs, both to Ability Tools for pulling everybody together today. Thanks so much. Um, we do have some representatives of different uh, states across the country um, I think I see uh, some folks from Arizona, some folks from Indiana, um, and these are, you know, your state has an assistive technology program that can help you with whatever kind of assistive project you need done, whether it's, you know, uh, finding a contractor or uh, a lot of them have reuse libraries. This is a federal program that's administered through the states. And they are so unbelievably helpful, uh, you know, if, if you're doing any kind of work uh, to, support, to support the community. So, uh, you know, do reach out. And if you're having trouble finding your, your organization in your state, feel free to send me an email. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure feel free to reach out to, to Catherine and Megan and they can help you out as well. This is Megan. I just shared in the chat a link to find your state program if you're not in California. If you are in California, congratulations. You are in the right place. You found your state program. Catherine, is there anything else you'd like to chime in? We've got about 10 minutes left here. No, I think um, I, I'm good uh, on the specific topic of WillPad. I'm so excited about this product. It's and I'm, I'm looking into something specifically for our family's needs. So they, these, this really gets me excited. 
And thank you so much, RJ, for joining us. This is our first installment of our latest and greatest series. Catherine, would you like to give folks a little more of what to expect in this series coming forward? Sure. Um, let me go ahead and throw this out. Um, Marisol from ILRCSF, the Independent Living Center in San Francisco, has shared that helphopelive.org helps fundraise um, and it doesn't count against your benefits. That is one of the, that is a great resource to have in hand. Thank you, Marisol. Um, so this series, we are hoping to be able to um, put out a new, uh, a new um, part of the series every other month. And we're going to be continuing on with all of the new and fun and exciting items that are new to AT. You know, we're all familiar with um, the, the items that have been around for, um, for a bit, the, the mainstays that we use in our daily lives, but there's always new stuff coming out. There's some exciting advancement in um, assistive technology, and that is what we want to share with you guys. And so you can look forward to this series continuing on every other month, as long as I can find neat stuff, and there's always going to be neat stuff. Thank you. And if you guys have any uh, presenters that you think would be great for these series, please send those ideas to Catherine and myself. Our emails are Catherine at CFILC.org and Megan at CFILC.org. Um, and we do have some events coming up that we're really excited about that I'm going to go ahead and share while we have you here with us. We have a disability speaker series being run through our Youth Organizing Disabled and Proud program. I just shared the link to find the registration for that. It is also our first event. We are having lots of inaugural events this in the coming month or so. And this event is uh, bringing together a uh, somebody from the disability community to, as a speaker, the youth are picking, our youth are 16 to 28, they're picking who they'd like to come speak, and they are picking the topics we discuss with the speakers, and they'll be doing the questions themselves. Uh, our first speaker is Alice Wong, who's the founder of the Disability Visibility Project, and we're really excited to have her. And then the other thing that ties in really well with the latest and greatest training from Ability Tools is we are putting together a conference, uh, the California Foundation for Independent Living Centers, which is where Catherine and I are, in partnership with the California Association of Area Agencies on Aging, say those two three times fast, right? Are putting together a conference on Earth Day, April 22nd, it's a Thursday. We just launched registration yesterday and our entire conference is focused around assistive technology. Uh, we had a conference last December, is that right? And one of our topics at that conference was on assistive technology and it was very clear from our evaluations that folks wanted to do a spin-off conference. So we are bringing it to you. And we are going to have six workshops. And right now our workshops are identified as AT makers. So learning how to repurpose household items into assistive technology that you might have otherwise put in a landfill. We're gonna teach you about recycling, refurbishing and reusing assistive technology from low tech to high tech. We're gonna discuss AT for aging in place at home and learn about uh, the new devices to help us age safely at home and maybe tack those into your wheel pad. We're gonna talk about AT for connection and companionship, where we'll learn about assistive technology to keep you connected, including uh, animatronic robots. We're excited about that. Closing the digital divide for older adults. We have Senior Planet and Oats coming to speak at us for with us of how they're doing that. And then we're going to start talking about AT Smart Homes, which is a kickoff of a smart home series that we're also running through Ability Tools. So please register, it's $59, and you'll have access to the archives after the event as well. Since you obviously can't be in two workshops at once, you'll be able to go back and watch them later. So any questions before we close today? Okay, I'll pass it over to you, Catherine, to lend, end, end the day. Thank you so much for joining us, RJ. Thank you so much for having me. All right, thanks again. Um, I really appreciate everybody's participation in this event. Uh, it's very exciting. And I really do appreciate all of the information that you brought to us, AJ. Your product is just fantastic. Thanks. All right, thank you everybody. Um, I will be sending out um, information on any upcoming events that we have coming up uh, down the road. And please again, reach out if you want to participate in a larger discussion about finding financing options for housing like this. Um, you can email me at Catherine 
at CFILC.org. My name is spelled funny. So it is K-A-T-H. R-I-N-E. You can thank my mom for that one. So please reach out if you guys want any information. Thank you all. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. <laughs>